today I'm tinkering with these little electronic distance sensors. Um, they're cheap and all over the place uh, for Arduino. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, th I thought they'd be useful for a future project that I'm working on. Let's just take a give you a hint as to what that project might be. Um, Anyway, uh, if uh, if all goes well, then I'll want to mount one of these on it so that I can tell how far it is away from, you know, walls, dogs, tables, things like that. So, I need to figure out how to use it. Oh, I'll actually start on the front here. On the front, there's two little, they look like speakers or microphones and actually they kind of work like either one but in really high frequencies um you know one one actually transmits and one receives uh as you can tell by the t and the r there uh, on the back there's three chips uh this one over here says uh says rcw9006 one in the middle says RCWL9190. And this one over here is completely anonymous. No idea. And just to double check, it's also scrubbed off this one. So I don't know what kind of secrets are hiding in there, but whatever. Anyway, I, I did a bunch of Googling on these two part numbers and I came up with absolutely nothing except for things pointing back to this module so anyway let's uh take a quick peek at what kind of information we can find on this thing with some googling for the part number hcsr04 i was able to actually find a manual for it it's this one looks slightly different it's got actually got a uh, crystal on there the one that I've got doesn't, not only doesn't it have a crystal, it doesn't have anything that looks like a crystal on it. But the part number of the board's the same, the pins are the same. So this, uh, yeah, give us some information anyway. There's some good useful information right there. 5 volts, less than 2 milliamps when it's not doing anything, 15 when it is. The sensing beam is at less than 15 degrees, which is nice, so you're not going to get, uh, a lot of extraneous crud um, you get just what's right in front of it claims to be good between two centimeters and four meters or one inch and 13 feet for those of you in that country um, resolution up to a third of a centimeter it's not bad now measuring angle 30 degrees I guess that's plus and minus 15 from the front of it the trigger input pulse, that's important when, you, when we come to the software later, 10 microseconds. And then the dimensions, yada yada. And there's just showing the uh, the beam width. I'm assuming that's horizontal and vertical because these things aren't really, uh, don't have any kind of pattern, they're just a circle, so. Um, uh, yeah, we saw that. Oh, we didn't see this before. 40 kilohertz, which is about twice what... Uh, the limits of human hearing are human hearing normally tops out well for uh, young'uns who haven't been exposed to lots of loud rock and roll uh, people top out about 20 kilohertz so that's twice what a normal person can hear a dog might notice it so it looks like there's some special uh, signaling and a little bit of timing you have to do so on the on the signal pin, you have to give it a quick wake up pulse of 10 microseconds and then a pulse width. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, okay. Uh, ultrasonic transducer will send out 8 40 kilohertz pulses. Dig, 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 dig. And then as an echo back comes back to you, um, I guess the pulse width. Okay, pulse width corresponds to distance. Fine. There's going to be some math involved. Hardware interface, power, ground, trigger, and echo. Okay. And it's got some sample code. It's using 
a library but the library isn't included with it, with this document anywhere that I found it so the uh, Arduino IDE comes with this ping sketch here which is for using the ultrasonic rangefinder and returning a distance which is just what we're doing so you connect V plus to the 5 volt ground to the ground and signal of the to pin 7 here's my first problem this one is assuming an older style unit a 3 pin unit but mine is a 4 pin unit so hang on let me just Yeah, there's that 3-pin unit. That's the one that it's assuming, which isn't the one I've got. And if you go Googling around, pretty much every one is a 4-pin unit. That one's a 5. Weird. But most of them are 4-pin that you can find online. Uh, and that's indeed what I ended up buying. So, what I've done with looking around online and finding various other people's ideas is I have gone in and mutated this sketch. Um, we'll look at that in a minute. First of all we'll go and hook it up. Um, I've just chosen these arbitrarily. It doesn't really matter. The echo pin being the input, pin 11, the trigger pin being the output, pin 12, and of course voltage and ground. So let's do this. Um, ground is over there. Actually, yeah, let's zoom in here. So ground is over there. Put VCC there. And echo and uh, get in there, you trigger. And then on the Arduino, do the same things. Echo, my sketch said echo goes to pin 11, 8, 9, 10, 11. Echo is the first one, right? And then pin 12. Oh crap, what's going on here? Cheap DuPont wires. 11 and 12. And just do a quick upload. So, no quick upload. There we go. So my uh, serial print is what did I set it for? 9600. Okay, here we go. And it's showing something about 16 centimeters away. Which, oh wait, let's just see here. That's about 15. That's good. Let's back it off to. 15 and 5, there's about 20. That's pretty damn close. Let's move it a little bit closer. 18, 20. All right, let's put something. Well, actually, let's set the ruler down right there so we can see it. What's going on here? Why is it reading that like that? Come on, quit twisting. There. Okay, 18, 19 centimeters. And you put something about halfway in between. Six centimeters. Perfect. And let's point it up at the ceiling. Perfect. I, I don't know if that's 120 centimeters away, but we'll say it is for me good measure. So that was fairly straightforward. Just 
Um, actually, yeah, let's go and look at the code, shall we? So what I've done on the code, instead of using one pin for both, I've split it. So I've got an echo pin and a trigger pin, in and out, uh, serial pin, blah, blah, blah. Uh, two pins, trigger mode, make the output a note, make the input an input. Um, that's just left over. Uh, define the the variables. That's completely left over from the old one. This I just uh, in the old one it had you changing on the original it had you changing uh, the the pin mode between here and here to between output and input. But since I'm using two pins, I don't have to. So I put those out there and we write to the trigger pin. Now then, here is this um, this stuff from, remember the timing in the data sheet there? Uh, it needs that two microsecond uh, low, and then go high, and then come low again. So that's what causes the, the firmware in the little thing to send out its 840 kilohertz pulses. And then, as soon as that's happened, we set this duration variable to be to use the pulse in function, which is something I've never used. Um, and I just copied again; it's straight from the demo sketch, so I'm not entirely sure how it works. Feel free to explain it if you're if you're a guru, um, or just go and look in the Arduino documentation. And if you're good at coding and things like that you should be able to figure it out uh, anyway so that returns a microseconds number for the actual duration it took from between when the last thing happened here which is when we told it to send out its pulse and here when it received the pulse back on the little receiver microphone transducer thingy uh, some math uh, this actually calls some functions that are down below here, and then we just print them out. Uh, the original sketch just had inches and centimeters. I added duration just because. Um, so here is the actual math explained. And again, that's just straight out of the demo sketch. I didn't do any of that myself. I just trusted them to be correct. And as we saw on the bench, it was pretty damn close. So after that, um, and being all proud of myself that it actually works, I decided to see if I could find any other ways of doing this. Um, remember in the data sheet it was talking about using a library. So I wandered off and found a, where is it, a library called Nuping. Where is it down here? Uh, Nuping, and it came with these demo sketches. So I grabbed that one and here is that demo sketch and I've already modified it for my pins that I'm already connected to because why wouldn't I? And actually let's set this to 9600 because that's what I'm using. Uh, does it compile? It does. Let's upload that. Uploading done uploading okay let's uh, serial monitor that one hmm why is that all over the map Okay, so I just wiggled the transducer a little bit so that it's actually aiming there and not up into the yonder and up into all the, uh, well, actually, let's just, so up above it on the wall there, there's all kinds of crap, so that would probably create all kinds of weird echoes, but I've got it aiming pretty much at my sign here. So now, that 17 centimeters, and again, if I move something in between it, 7, 8 centimeters, yeah, hooey. Let's aim it up at the ceiling. 100 and... That's bouncing around, but yeah, that's pretty close to what it was before, wasn't it? 
and get it back into here again. There we go. So that's another way of doing it. And that code was even simpler, really. Um, library, define your pins, maximum distance. The sensor's rated for 400. Yeah, it's, it, the data sheet said 400. Um, this says 400 to 500. But the, uh, the library lets you set the max distance, so it's 2 meters in this case. And then there is the command that does all the magic for setting it up. Send it the two pins and the maximum distance. And then I should do that instead. That'll make it a little bit easier to deal with. Um, make that a bit short, a bit longer. So then you serial print the ping. And then this is what's returned from the library. You could also, I guess, I haven't looked at the library documentation actually. I wonder if there's this. A serial ping inches. Maybe there is. I don't know. Yes, there is. So in the new ping library, here's the different keywords that are possible. Ping, ping inches, ping centimeters, median, ping timer, check timer, ping result, timer, microsecond, millisecond, and converts. Okay. So if for whatever reason you wanted it to be in inches, you would just do uh, what did I do here? Um, ping that. No, not that. That. There you go. And that would turn it into inches. I don't want to do that. Why would I want to do that? Okay, so there's that. So that's, I mean, that's nothing earth shattering, but I just spent some, some time tinkering with this so that I can figure out how to use it. I've got to do some more, uh, as always, I've got to figure out coding a lot better so I can make use of that number, that distance number in a sketch for collision avoidance or something like that. And there are other ways to do collision avoidance, of course. Hang on. Uh, where is it? These things, these things are actually designed for collision avoidance. I'm using them for detecting trains mostly, but we could also put one of these on the front of our mobile vehicle, VHS hickle thing to prevent crashing into stuff. But this has a lot more range. These things are only good for, you know, kind of that sort of range. This thing, you know, as we've seen, it's good for over a meter which is excellent. Um, so there's, I mean, there's lots of other things to do. I just wanted to get to playing with this and get a little bit comfortable with it. So I know what I can do with it when I get around to it. Hope that was a little bit interesting for you. Um, informative. Maybe some of you haven't seen these things before. Um, I don't know a huge amount more yet than what I've talked about here. Uh, I did find a few web pages and stuff and I found that manual. Um, and just simple Googling should find that stuff for you too, but for what it's worth, there it is a nice, simple little module. Oh, thanks for watching. Um, as always, if you've got any comments or questions, please submit them down below for the discussion of our peers. Oh yeah. Somebody's going to ask. The beer is Pioneer Harvest Stout from Farmery Estate Brewing Company in Nipawa, Manitoba. It's not nearly as heavy a stout as, as a lot of them. It's uh, quite light. It's a little bit hoppy. Um, not quite as roasty, but it's definitely a drinkable beer. And of course, you gotta like local beer. Anyway. Now, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about today and probably more rambling than I wanted to do. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Comments, questions, complaints, criticisms, bad jokes, uh, whatever, down in the comments. I'll talk to you later.